Welcome back, Barbarians, to another Destiny 2 episode. And today I want to be talking about this week's specifically Nightfall double loot and how to grind it, why to grind it, and what to be using for loadouts. And before we get started, let's go ahead and thank the sponsor of today's video, Nobody. So, as you can see on screen, this is my Striker Titan that I am playing with. Of course, all three subclasses can certainly be used during this Nightfall. I would say the two most popular ones, and I can't really explain why, would be the Titan and certainly the Hunter. And this is the Insight Terminus for this week. Now, if you're doing anything under Grandmaster, you just can do Insight Terminus, but if you have the Conqueror seal unlocked, at that point you can farm other Nightfalls as well, given the Grandmaster Rotator Playlist, which you have access to at that point, which allows you to go for the Gilded Seal. Now, you're not here for those types of tickets and gems. Today, I specifically want to go over just why you should be farming either the Master Nightfall or the Legend, whichever one you are capable of doing. Now, the Master Nightfall is set at 1610 power, so anything really above 1595 you shouldn't have really any problem running through this nightfall. And just the main reason I'll start with here is due to the fact that between the Grandmaster and the Master Nightfall, depending on your team, I understand, it can save you three to five minutes at least between those two runs and variances in the nightfall. The Master Nightfall, this run you're witnessing here is with a complete team of randoms off the Destiny 2 Companion app, uh, which you of course, you know, if you have a group or a clan, somebody online, this is going to go even smoother as you get some synergy between your loadouts or you run all the same character, which in my opinion, Striker Titan is the fastest way to run this Nightfall. Uh, my build here, as you'll see, isn't even optimized. I'm kind of using the classic Heart of Inmost Light, High Energy Fire, uh, so on and so forth, Elemental Ordinates, and mainly with this build as you'll see in the gameplay in the background is I'm just spamming my abilities as a quick side tangent please drop it in the comments below if you've been doing this nightfall these two unstoppable champions that spawn through that gate have been I think bugged all week you can stun them but when you stun the champions they never act as if they've been impacted by the stun so they don't take additional damage after being quote unquote stunned uh, having said that, it hasn't really caused an issue, it's just more annoying than anything. Uh, so yep, I'm just cruising along here. Got all my abilities up. My loadout for this, and this loadout works really on any character, is Wither Horde with a Void Pulse. And I'm using Commemoration, the machine gun from Deepstone Crypt. I really, really enjoy this one, especially with the Void Burn that's on this uh, strike slash nightfall or nightfall excuse me um, so it's plus 50% void damage dealt to you and dust plus 25% void damage that you deal so they say there's a arc shield in here um, I honestly can't think of it and I've run this many many times I don't know where it is so if you do drop a comment uh, all you see is void shields so on top of this being one of the easier nightfalls to run it's also blessed us this week with double loot. Now you might be wondering, Grandmasters just came back, what is the Nightfall reward? Um, unfortunately in my opinion, it's Mindbender's Ambition. This is the solar energy slot shotgun which has just been out for far too long. If you don't have a roll, certainly pick one up. Um, and that is the only reason only reason in my opinion to run the Grandmaster for the Insight Terminus um, you know just strictly speaking about loot I'm not talking about you know going for the seal or whatnot but if you have no interest in the Adept Mindbender's Ambition then I highly suggest running these Master Runs you can do them within uh, I would say 8 to 12 13 minutes um, I'm not sure how long this run is that we do here Again, it being random, so I'm just kind of doing my own thing. Excellent. It's not too much coordination going on. I would say me, individually, I've kind of got it dialed in to where I know when the waves spawn in, as you can see there. I know the timing. Um, 
you know, when the Cabal drop ship or ball drops into the map, that triggers a wave of ads. So you can stand near the Vex gates and um, you can kind of kill the enemies on command and before they even get a chance really to step onto the battlefield, which is really nice. As you can see here, Commemoration is just doing absolute work to these enemies. Not really anything that's going to hold it up. You know, as a team, we're trying to work through these barrier champions. Uh, nothing too crazy there. Pop my ult. Yeah, so just continuing to plug away. You know, very good addition to this. Just keep in mind, any, any character, use the seasonal mod Lucent Finisher if you haven't been already. Very versatile, so when you uh, do a finisher to a champion, it automatically drops heavy ammo. Very, very versatile in end game uh, gameplay. You know, we got blessed this season with some of the best mods in the game, in my opinion. So, yep, so we do have a warlock in here, so we're just rotating with our second orb. We're going to kill this barrier champion, then there's one more up top. The main thing is really just breaking those shields as soon as they come up. And we're going to continue to press forward as a team. Once we finish this section here, I'm going to cut the video to the boss fight because nobody, let's be real, nobody wants to see you traverse to the boss. Um, I don't know what happened to my aim there. You can uh, make fun of me in the comments. Alright, so we're at the boss fight for the master. Again, double loot rewards, so things you're looking for are ascendant shards, exotics, enhancement prisms. Um, and you'll see from this run, typically... I personally haven't been getting many Ascendant Shards, I don't really care, um, I'm purposely trying to go for uh, Lordly Splendor, the Exotic Titan Helm, Dune Marchers, the Exotic Titan Boots, or Heart of Inmost Light for the Exotic Titan Chest Piece. I have all of these, I just have really, really, really bad rolls, uh, so I'm aspiring to get something with some resilience and low mobility, that's just, I know, my baseline is low but uh, I'm really grasping at straws. I would say this weekend, or this week since it's been out, I've probably done 40 master runs, which you know isn't crazy compared to some folks, but uh, my time is semi-limited, so when I'm hopping on, I'm just hopping into Master Nightfalls, grinding through it. Um, again, I do switch up the loadout every once in a while because it just gets a little bit stale, so I can keep it fresh. Um, certainly Bubble Titan is another great option with the Void element doing additional damage. Um, but the Heart of Inmost Light synergy with Storm Grenades here is just mm, chef's kiss in my opinion. So much fun. Uh, never gets old. And at no point I think in any of my runs uh, no one out uh, fragged me in terms of kills. And it's really the Lightning Nade you can thank for that because... Uh, it just is a DPS ad clearing king. You know, you just throw it. The jolting between targets does the work for you. Yep, so here we've spawned, I believe. Yep, we're in the second phase. We're just trying to melt this boss here. Um, perfect. Over. Mission complete. See my loot drop. Yep, Senate Shard, five enhancement prisms, and two exotics. And the reason it said exotic engrams, it will do that if your inventory is full for the item you got. So please let me know if you guys have been farming it. Thank you so much for watching this short video. See you next time.